In this video, I'm going to show you how to make jump rings easily, safely, and with no fancy expensive equipment. I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. Over the past 50 years, I've seen many different ways of making jump rings. Some methods are really fascinating and ingenious, and then others you just scratch your head and wonder, what were they thinking of? Nowadays we have complex electrical machines, drills, or expensive 100-piece shiny steel tool sets, and of course, all with shiny price tags too. Unless you are going into mass production of jump rings and need hundreds or thousands a day, you probably won't need any of those fancy tools. All of us need jump rings, of course, but we normally only need a few at a time or want that special size for that special project. There are two steps in making jump rings, coiling the wire and cutting the wire. It's as simple as that. I'd like to show you some real easy and fast ways of making jump rings. Let's take a look at coiling first. The first thing that you're going to need for coiling the wire for making jump rings is some kind of a rod that you can wrap the wire around. I really like drill bits because Number one, they come in all different sizes, which will accommodate any kind of jump ring that you need. And they're nice and smooth in this area here, so you can hold them in the, uh, in the cut parts. And then this area right in here is just perfect for wrapping, wrapping the wires around. There are many other tools that you can use to wrap the wire also. Any kind of rod or a pick, just as long as you can slip the coil off the end of the rod. Try to avoid any of the burrs or anything that has an end on it, so when you chuck it up into however you're going to be holding it, and you wrap your coils, you want to be able to slip it off the end of the rod. The next thing that we need is something to hold those rods or the drill bits. We'll start off with the ring clamp. Works out really well. Simply put your piece in the, in the ring clamp. Slide your wedge in and you're all set. Holds it very well. What you can do too is I like to take the wire and slip it into the ring clamp so it is held in position and then you can simply wrap it with your hand. Very, very easy, straightforward. Another tool that you can make that's a little bit more limited, but you can just simply take a piece of wood or a dowel rod, drill a little hole in this side here, and drill a hole in the end of it and then you can take your wire uh, and stick it in here, hold it, and simply wrap it around whatever rod that you have in the end. Another cool tool for holding rods is a pin vise. You can be limited to the size that you're going to be putting into the pin vise, but if you have the right size that's going to be fitting in here, it's a real nice tool that you can slip the wire in here, and then instead of wrapping it this way, you can simply just spin the pin vise, and it will coil your wires onto the rod. Now the ultimate holder is your vise. Simply open up the jaws, slide whatever size of rod that you want in here. That's what's great about the vises, is that you can put in any size of rod. Stick your wire into the jaws with the rod, 
tighten it up nice and tight, and then you're ready to wrap and make your coil. Now, let's take a look at cutting the coils. Now that we have our coils, we need to cut through the coils to make the jump rings. Many people are tempted to use wire cutters because it's real fast and easy, but the problem is the wire cutters are tapered on both sides, and when you cut through the jump ring, it will leave a pinched cut which is unacceptable because it's not flush and we can't solder the jump rings together very easily and accurately. What we need to do is we need to cut through the coil and leave a nice flush cut. What can we use that would give us that flush cut if we can't use the wire cutters? We can use an ultra flush cutter. The ultra flush cutter has a flat side on one side and a tapered cut on the other side of the cutter. When we cut through the wire, it will leave a nice flush cut on one side and a tapered cut on the other. This is still not acceptable because we don't have the two flush cuts coming together. But we can work around that by actually cutting the jump rings twice. What we need to do is we'll take and cut one side and it will be flush. Now take your flush cutters and turn them around so you'll have two flush cuts on the jump ring. Then you want to cut off the excess on the next jump ring, flush cut, turn them around. Now you have two flush cuts together. You'll see that they're nice and smooth, but they're not as accurate and they don't match up perfectly. The ultra flush cutters are really great for cutting jump rings fast, easily, and safely. But as you saw, they don't always match up perfectly. And the only way to do that, to make the perfect flush cut, is to use your jeweler's saw. Now the question is, how do we hold the coil for when we're going to be sawing it with our jeweler saw? Many people have all different ways of holding the coils for cutting them. I've narrowed it down to about two different ways of cutting the coils for jump rings. One will be on the bench pin and another one will be off the bench pin. Let's take a look at the bench pin first. This is the sweet spot on the bench pin where you're going to be sawing the coils to make your jump rings. Right at the end of the V-shape and just over the edge of it to have it support the coil on both sides of the V-shape. The problem with these coils when you're holding them here by hand is they have a tendency to rock around and move back and forth on you and they're real difficult to hold still. You really need some kind of support in there to help hold it. What I've done is I've drilled a hole at the end of the V-shape. I've slid a pin down into that hole, and you can use a small nail also. But I just have these nice hard pins, slip the coil over it, and then I can hold the coil by pushing forward against the pin and down and that will hold it in a nice firm position for you to start sawing to cut your jump rings. Now let's take a look at the method of cutting the coils off of the bench pin. What I've done is I've chucked my jeweler's saw frame into the vise, put the blade into the upper jaw with the teeth pointing down toward the handle, made it nice and tight in the upper jaw. Then you can take your coil, 
slip it onto the blade, take and flex your jeweler saw frame so it will go into the lower jaw, tighten it up, then you have a nice tight blade across here. Take some lube, lube your blade, and then you want to simply grab the coils kind of from the bottom and tilt them toward the top of the frame. So you'll be cutting from the top edge first down through the coil. Hold it nice and tight and just take it easy and move it back and forth on the blade and take it slowly and it will start cutting. You'll be able to feel it cutting. Just take it slow and easy and it will cut very easily through your coil and you don't have to worry about the saw frame slipping on the coil as we did from the outside because it's already in through here and there you go. You have them all cut nice and even, safely, no problem whatsoever. You see, jump rings can be very easy, fast, and you don't have to use a lot of expensive equipment. I hope that you've learned some tips from this video that will make your jewelry experience easier, faster, and much more successful. I'm Greg Greenwood. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.